Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about dressing down the double-breasted suit or jacket. We discuss how you can get more wear out of your double-breasted jackets. We show you interesting, more casual inspired outfits for your DB ensembles. And last but not least, we show you the don'ts of dressing down your double-breasted coat. <laughs> Aside from formal evening attire, double-breasted suits used to be as formal as it gets when it came to suits. You may have a couple of them in your wardrobe, but these days a lot of men wear single-breasted suits with slim lapels and you're not quite sure how you can incorporate those into your current wardrobe. Or maybe you've seen interesting pictures of Pete Uomo of gentlemen wearing double-breasted coats in a very casual way. Well, this video is for you. So one of the main ways to dress down a DB jacket, we came up with seven points. Number one, do pair your double-breasted jacket with more casual pants as well as informal shirts. Specifically, that means skip the white or pale blue shirt and instead go with something maybe in a washed denim. Alternatively, you could also go with flannel because it makes you look softer and more relaxed. In terms of colors, consider earthy tones and pastel tones in the range of brown, ivory, or yellow. These warm colors are perfect when combined with a double-breasted jacket. Alternatively, you can go with checked shirts, ideally with some color, such as maybe red or blue, maybe green, or something darker but you wanna incorporate color because that sets the shirt apart from a formal business shirt. For your pants or trousers, it means that you can go distinctly more casual. You can either go with corduroys in the summer, maybe with some linen blends, maybe mold skin, or anything else that's considered casual, except maybe jeans because they're just too informal. Of course, you can also consider chinos or maybe even a pair of navy suit trousers to combine it depending on your overall look and the feel you wanna get. At the end of the day, make sure that your trousers contrast your double-breasted jacket. Two, do pair your double-breasted jackets with less formal accessories and accoutrements like shoes. That means skip to Oxford and instead go with a monk strap shoe, maybe a double monk or a loafers. Traditionally, most men would have never worn a loafer with a double-breasted jacket, but it's something the Duke of Windsor introduced simply because it made everything more relaxed. In terms of shoe colors, brown is your friend and makes everything more casual, but you can even go a little further, maybe up for olive green, maybe a light gray, or just something unusual that you wouldn't find in a classic business wardrobe. That being said, burgundy or oxbot is always your friend. You can also opt for suede shoes because the same color in suede is always more casual than a regular calf leather. Choose derbies over oxfords because they're a little less formal. If you only have oxfords or only formal derbies, consider getting colorful shoelaces because they really break up the formality of your shoes and make it look like an entirely new pair, which is great for casual EB combinations. For a selection of quality shoelaces in rich colors and different shapes, please check out our shop here. Ideally, you skip the neckwear. If you want to have something around your neck, go with a knit tie, not with a classic silk tie, and maybe something in wool or something that's a little more casual, relaxed, and softer. If you have a worsted jacket, maybe go with a wool pocket square because it tones down the formality. If you have a flannel DB jacket, you can go with something like silk because it's a contrasting texture and it just rounds out your entire outfit. Overall, get something with colors or patterns, not a plain white linen pocket square because that would be too formal. For a nice selection of quality knit ties and wool pocket squares, please check out our website here. Three, consider skipping accessories altogether. That means no tie, and instead of maybe over the calf socks, go with no-show socks. That gives your ensemble definitely a very casual appearance. Of course, the no-show sock look only works during the summer, otherwise you'll be too cold. If you wear a shirt, skip the cufflinks, go with a barrel cuff. You can even leave it unbuttoned for a very casual feel. Four, get casual buttons. If you have dark horn buttons, or maybe plastic buttons, they look very formal. On a double-breasted jacket, such as a navy blazer, adding maybe mother of pearl buttons in a contrasting white is a clear sign to dress something down. As a general rule of thumb, the lighter the button color and the more contrasting, the more casual the overall look and feel. Five, play with your button configurations. 
Most double breasted jackets or suits come in a 6 2 configuration, meaning you have six buttons, two of which are buttoned. Traditionally, you'd button the two lower ones, which would create a much more formal look. Alternatively, you can leave the button bottom undone or you can button the whole thing just on the bottom row and see how it looks. You can also consider unbuttoning the jigger button on the inside, which will cause your lapel to be not as structured and will be a little less symmetrical and therefore more casual. Some people will even go as far to button the outside bottom button, but the inside top jigger button, which really results into a kind of asymmetrical look and I suggest you skip that because it just looks like something is wrong with your suit, but people can't pinpoint it. Overall, it doesn't make you look more casual, but more like someone who has glasses on that are crooked. Six, pair a DB blazer or jacket with a turtleneck sweater or maybe a wool knit polo shirt. Sweaters and cardigans are obviously less formal than dress shirts, and you can learn more about them in our respective guides on the website here. For a casual DB ensemble, the turtleneck sweater is ideal because it creates some visual interest in an area where you usually have a neckwear or a bow tie. Because it covers your neck, you'll feel warmer, which is in line with the two layers of fabric on a double-breasted jacket that will keep you warmer than a comparatively single-breasted one. For example, let's say you have a navy double-breasted suit or a navy blazer. It can look really great with a lighter or medium gray turtleneck sweater. Ideally, you want a melange thread, which means it has multiple colors, and when knitted into a sweater, you can have different flecks of color, which is a lot more casual than a solid white sweater, for example. Now, instead of with a suit pants, pair it with a pair of chinos or corduroys, and you have a much more casual look. If you find a turtleneck uncomfortable, maybe consider a knitted wool polo shirt, just make sure it has long sleeves, otherwise it will look odd and don't go with the seasonality of a double-breasted jacket. In terms of colors, go with ranges of off-white, medium gray, earth tones, or things like a darker green. If you want to add a bit more contrast, you can also make a statement with something in red. In general, you always want to create a certain amount of contrast between your turtleneck sweater or your polo shirt and your jacket, as well as the pants. If you want to dress down a double-breasted jacket in the summer, you can opt for louder shirts with bolder patterns or colors, or maybe polo shirts, but you definitely want cotton over wool, otherwise you overheat. Seven, intentionally buy more casual double-breasted jackets and blazers. Now, that's not a hack for your classic existing wardrobe, at the same time opting for something maybe in a linen fabric or something with a glencheck pattern in gray with colors of maybe purple or green is just a lot more casual and the whole look is easier to pull off. That being said, features like patch pockets versus flat pockets or jetted pockets are always more casual. Moreover, look at the texture of the fabric. A flannel with its hairy texture and touch will always be less formal than a worsted fabric in the same color and weight. Avoid solids and rather go with small patterns such as a Glen check or a small regular check. Definitely don't go with a striped jacket because that's inherently more formal and pairing it down with something more casual is just a clash that is too much. So now that you know the seven things to pay attention to when choosing a double-breasted coat, what are the things to avoid? First of all, don't pair a double-breasted jacket with jeans because denim is simply too casual and will clash with the formality of the double-breasted coat. Instead, opt for something maybe in a flannel color, such as off-white flannel pants. It's a lot better and more stylish. Two, don't wear your jacket unbuttoned. Unless it's your idea of sprezzatura, and you can learn more about that whole topic here, I suggest you keep your jacket buttoned. That means at least one button somewhere and you can play around with it and find what works for you and your jacket. Otherwise, a DB jacket is not designed to be worn unbuttoned and it will simply look off. If you have a tight double-breasted jacket to begin with, adding a turtleneck sweater will make it even tighter, so you may have to play around with the buttoning, otherwise it looks like it's too tight. Three, don't try to dress down a striped jacket 
because that is a very formal garment that is usually seen on Wall Street or in a business environment. Combining it with a casual sweater and casual pants is simply not something that will work, will always look weird. In the same vein, don't try to dress down double-breasted tuxedo jackets or dinner jackets, it simply won't work. Four, don't try to put your hands in your pockets constantly, even though it makes you look more casual. Yes, it is true. Having a hand in your pocket makes you look more relaxed, but overall, if you try to just have your hands in your pockets all the time, you end up having your clothes wearing you rather than you wearing the clothes. In my opinion, it's very self-conscious, and even though some people may do it at Pituomo in the hopes of getting photographed, it's impractical and not something a confident gentleman would do. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and videos like this come right to your inbox. In today's video, I'm wearing, of course, a double-breasted jacket, which is part of a suit, and it has brown tones, off-white tones, and a blue overplaid. It has contrasting brown buttons, and I'm pairing it with a likewise brown, yet slightly contrasty, melange tone turtleneck sweater. Frankly, I found this one at Uniqlo, and it was very inexpensive. I bought it because the wool wasn't scratchy and it fit me quite well. Because I have the wool sweater and a wool flannel jacket, I opted for a silk pocket square with small paisley patterns in blue that pick up the overcheck in my jacket. Because my DB jacket is already quite casual, I opted for a solid navy pair of worsted pants. Alternatively, I could have maybe gone with something in off-white or maybe dark brown. For my shoes, I chose dark brown penny loafers, which are not something you would traditionally wear with a double-breasted coat. It also allowed me to show off my more casual shadow striped socks with have earthy tones of burgundy red and sand. Those colors tie into my sweater and my double-breasted jacket and thus tie the whole outfit together. I'm also wearing a little pinky ring in rose gold, which is warmer than silver, and it has a blue stone that picks up the blue tone in the rest of my outfit. If you want a nice selection of socks that you can use to dress down your DB ensemble, please take a look here.